Thank you. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I'm going to tell you my life story for 79 years. I'll be next week. I'm going to try and do it in about 10 minutes. <laughs> it's been a long morning. Okay. Uh, I got a lot of notes here, but it's probably easier just to show you the picture. Of, uh, this is me right here at my my father. I was three years old then. This is a picture 1944. I was born in 1941, February the 8th. That's, uh, there's three more children that aren't born yet. And my father was one of the hardest working men that I, I have ever met. This is the house that we lived in uh, back then, had the old stone fence. And of course, that's the farm that I was born and raised on. Back in the 40s, there was no silos, the barn wasn't painted, there was no water in the house, we had an outhouse and the whole bit and stuff like that. So, that's where I worked in, uh, for a guy by the name of Howard Grosper. Some of you might know him, they own Cedar Hill Dairy. He was director of dealer relations for Chrysler Corporation. He knew that Larry Haney, believe it or not. Anyway, his, I, uh, it was owned by Jim Daniels before that, and uh, my father worked there, and then it changed hands when I was about 10 to, to the Roseford family. And he, his idea was eventually to get a dairy farm and sell the milk to their dairy. So, so anyway, <clears throat> this is the girl I met when she was about 15, 16, Pamela Millington in Cambridge. I married her when I was 20 in 1961. Uh, we have four children, that's when they're younger, this is when they're older. Uh, this is uh, Jamie. He is a plant supervisor, unit manager at A.D. Simpson, just up the road here. He got a pretty good job. This is my daughter that has a photography business and another business out of her house. Chris is my youngest. He's uh, uh, Sky Specialty Railings and Structural Steel business out of Bradford, doing very well now. And this is my son, Greg. He uh, broke his neck about 20 years ago in an accident. He has a farm in Guelph. He fits and show and clips cattle, believe it or not, out of that wheelchair for people for the Royal Winter Fair. He's an amazing, amazing young man. He'll haul her two-year-old bulls and pull them around in that wheelchair, believe it or not. And that's, of course, my way. This is uh, when Mr. Roseford took over the farm. He had a couple of mares that he had uh, leased out. So we got into breeding Palomino horses. That's the Palomino stallion we were using. And this is one of the fillies that uh, we bred. And I broke her to ride. And there you'll see me in the barrel racing up there. That, that she would, would, we used to go to the fairs. If you were at the, ever at the Gulf Fair on Western night and we did barrel racing, if you saw a Palomino horse, that was me. That was the only Palomino mare. I, that was my spare time hobby. Another spare time thing that I did do was I played hockey on the Industrial League in Cambridge at the Shade Street Arena. There's four teams and I played for a couple of years. Then I had to give it up because every time you got about 20 stitches in the eyes, we never wore pamphlets. And I couldn't afford to be laid on milk and cows. So in that time, I built a cow herd, put all those silos up. And when I left there, in 73, I was milking 75 cows. And my goal was to produce a cow that would produce 100 pounds a day. And I did do that in 72. And that was unheard of. So, Mr. Roger was not very happy when I left there because I went to work for this man, Gil Henderson here, and Molly Henderson. In September 73, he had a farm just uh, south of us it's called Onondaga Farms, and he had 350 steers. And uh, so I went to work for him to manage his farm. He was a, a mechanical contractor out of Toronto, and I only saw him on the weekends. And then they were, he was also an Olympic shooter in the Olympics, and away most of the time. And this is a, a 
fellow that we moved, I don't know if you know this gentleman here. That's, no, I must have moved it. But that's Bobby, that's Bobby Hall. And then that's a recent picture of him, and that's Alabama, which I got to know because they were breeding cold Herefords. And when Bobby was that age, he stayed at our place at the house with the kids and I for a week, which, and, and my wife, she knew he was coming, so she said he's going to get our master bedroom, so she made it all up, nice sheets and everything, and he wouldn't take it. He was that kind of guy, he says, I'm not taking your bedroom. And she was kind of upset. She said, because she said she wanted to tell everybody that Bobby Hall saw in her bed. <laughs> <laughs> so she was really disappointed. <laughs> but Bob was a good friend. He was a partner in cattle with us. And uh, I owned some cows with him just a couple years ago. We were still partners in cows. And this is some of the, this is the farm where I lived. The house is a big red brick house built in 1848. That's where I lived. And that was an old barn when I moved there. We redone it all. And this is one of the trailers that we showed the cattle. There's another big one down here. But these are about 50 yearling heifers. And when we got into the cattle business in 73, we were able to uh, multiply so fast because we, uh, we must have missed some pictures here somewhere. But uh, we had about a 60, 65% heifer calf crop every year. And we were up to about 200 cows by 1980. And the most I calved in one, one year, January, February, was 192 cows. And there was some nights I never slept. Like, we were, we were pretty busy. So in 1979, we had our first production sale. That's, uh, that's a picture of it up there. I think Bobby Hall kind of was opening it for us. And I'm kind of over in the corner there, and that's my son Greg that's in the wheelchair. And, and we broke a record having our first production sale. We averaged about $5,000 a head, and that's never been done before. And then 1979, we took our first string of cattle to Agribition, and the bull on the left, this is winning the Geta Sire, that three animals that had to be bred with the same bull. And this little heifer on this end was called Justify. It was grand champion female of aggravation, and we borrowed her to put that get, so that's how we kind of won it. But she had never been beaten in a show and sold for I don't know how much money. But this little girl here is a cow called Twiggy. She's a two-year-old. She's probably the best female that we ever bred on the farm. Uh, that, that first calf there, we took her to Agribition. We also sold an interest in her for 20000 uh, in 79, and the calf sold privately to uh, Ken Williams in uh, New Zealand for 36000 and, and that cow, uh, eventually you'll see her here. This is her as a four-year-old at the Royal Winter Fair winning the Grand Champion female. And that cow there, as a calf, a yearling, and a two-year-old and a four-year-old, we took her to Agribition Regina at the Canadian National Show every year. No other animal that I know in her business has ever required, been able to do that. But most of them don't make it. They either good one year or not. But that little cow there, we sold as a bull calf. We put her in embryo transplant. You'll see there's an Angus we use, and that's a purebred uh, calf out of her. This cow here sold embryos for over 12000 I mean, that cow, I think she, uh, one was 50000 She brought an, uh, about two, a quarter of a million dollars revenue to us and the partners. She was just fantastic. It, and every time visitors come, she was the thing they wanted to see. And believe it or not, she was bred by a bull called the Stick. And Bobby Hall owned that bull. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. But, Fabulous cow. Yes. And she's buried on the farm under a rock on a walkway that goes from the barn to the camp. And that's another picture up there. We won the exhibitor award. And in 1994, Gil and Molly were on the show committee of the Toronto Royal. And the Canadian National Show has always been in Regina. So we got, they got to bring the Canadian National Show to the Royal Winter Fair in 1994. So that's, if you wanted to show on the Canadian National, you had to come from Calgary or 
whatever to Toronto. So this is us at the Royal Winter Fair. This bull here was grand champion, and that's Bobby Hall right there. He was a partner in the bull. And then there's another guy, Jack McGaughy. He was a partner. It was three partners, and we won that. And this is our string of cattle that we had there. This is how we presented them. The bulls on the end, there was the second one is a reserve champion female, and there was a couple of junior champions. If you see all the banners, they were either champions or winners, and that's how we displayed our cattle at the Toronto. And I won the, Her the Herdsman Award for the Royal that year too, plus I won in aggravation the Herdsman Award. So if you kept your stall like that, you could, we did that, that's the way we presented our stuff. And I did all the clipping and the collar breaking, and then I hired people at the show to fit them. And I did the showing. And up top here is uh, 94. I was presented, which was a kind of an honor, at the Royal with the Canadian Herdsman Award, given out by the Canadian Herdsman Association. So I won a beautiful silver buckle. So that was quite an honor. And this is Dr. Lenny Rothrop over here. Uh, Dr. Brian Hansey, I don't think he's here today, but he was our other vet. Rennie was on board since 1974. Great vet. The only thing about Brian Hennessy was, Dr. Hennessy, when he came to the farm as an emergency, he always had to, instead of getting his gloves on, he had to tell you a funny joke that he'd heard. He'd have to get that out of the system first before he'd do anything. But <laughs> Rennie would get right down to business. And out of that, you know, calving 192 cows, and a lot of them were heifers, we averaged sometimes three sections, C-sections, and these guys are the guys that did it. So, so after, uh, I don't know if we've got these things in order here or not, but, uh, but this is, uh, this is in 19, uh, 19, uh, 1999, Molly had passed away, Gil's wife. So Gil and, and Molly, just before she died, Ron Joyce was a very good friend of Gil and Molly's, and this was him. Oops. This is Ron here, and Dave Thomas over here, and this is Gil Henderson. So they asked Ron if he was interested in uh, kind of taken over the farm, because it was 400 acres. We had 830 acres he owned, and uh, he said yes, he would love to do it, because they had six camps already, and uh, this is a tour in 2000 that I toured them, and uh, they decided with all the board of directors that they would take over the farm and put it into a Tim Ward children's camp. And that's Dave Thomas up there. I just wanted to show you this girl here. That's Walter Scott's wife. <clears throat> and Joanne was our secretary at the farm for over 20 years. Because Gil and Molly were in Calgary for five years as opening a mechanical contract. And so I didn't see them very much. And they were in Toronto usually all week. So we had to have somebody. So I run the day-to-day -day operations on the farm for them. And then this is a picture of one of the bunk houses at the camp. And then when we got into Tim Hortons, uh, one of my uh, things that I was approached in 2002, we opened the camp. And the Canadian Chestnut Council came to me and asked me if I would like to be a director on the Canadian Chestnut Board. And the Canadian, uh, American Chestnut became extinct from 1904 with a blight. And there was a million and a half of them in southern Ontario. And, and Dr. Colin McKean was a scientist who was trying to start this club in 1988 and wanted to bring the chestnuts back. So I got on the board as the director, and, and in 2002, we planted 500 trees of nuts. And then now, this was just uh, a year ago, actually, Rand was, Rand was out to the farm last June when we planted a bunch, and uh, we now, <clears throat> we use a lot of volunteers to plant these saplings, and there's a young tree that was a bunch of nuts on it, and there's one that's at the back of my house, it's about 15 years old, full of American chestnuts, and I just 
beautiful to eat. So this is how we plant them. And we have 14,000 trees on the farm now. And we're planting 3,000 every year. So some of the work that I've done, uh, they've asked me to do, I do a lot of woodworking and building and stuff like that. This is a, an overnight site that I was asked if, to see if I could find a spot and build something. So this is what I came up with. We built this uh, overnight site. This is the framework. And then we cut all the, the wood on the sides here with my sawmill out of the bush and it made it look like an old western town. And the kids spend the night there when they're on camp. And then we take them with the horses, uh, give them a ride from the camp, from that site back to the camp every every time, every morning. And that's that's what that's one of the teams there. I built that wagon too. But this is an interesting program right here. This is Harry Lumston and Kelly Shaver worked at the camp, and that's Harry sexing a swan, a trumpeter swan. And uh, <clears throat> that's what I mentioned about Walter. This is something that Walter does, looks after them. And this girl on the tractor is now the new farm manager at Onondaga Farms. She asked me now, what do you want to do today? Instead of me telling her what to do, sort of deal. But she's as strong as a bull and a wonderful girl. She lives next door in one of the houses. And there's, there's Walter there, just last week feeding. We've had up to 140 trumpeter swans on a nine-acre pond that we keep open, and he's got them eating right out of the pail. And, uh, and Walter looks after this every morning, goes and feeds two ponds. The only thing, Walter, you notice is something wrong with that picture. You're not wearing a hat. If you look down there on the ice, they used to go out in the ice and feed the swans. And Gil used to say to them, don't ever go out in the ice, Walter, unless you're wearing your hat, because you go through, we'll know where you are. <laughs> Remember that, Walter? I thought of that the other day, he was on one. <laughs> but this is, this is what we do, and if you go back in the early 70s, is when we started this, uh, pinning them and having them Actually, Gil Henderson and Harry Lumpster were the two people that started the Trumpers Swan Restoration because they were becoming extinct. Now we've got about 500 pairs in Ontario. Wow. And even back in 1970, we did uh, we got on board with Ducks and Limited at the farm. They have 40 wetlands that they've dammed up, and we still are, are with Ducks and Limited to this day. And that's a program that's been going on and on. And in 2010, I was already at Tim Hortons at that time, uh, Pam and I uh, were honored with the Canadian Hereford Association Special Service Award, which is the first time that they, the Canadian Hereford Association wanted to honor somebody other than an owner of a breed of herd of cattle that were quite involved with Herefords and got the uh, they nominated us in 2010. They uh, honored us with that service, special service award they gave us. So I got a beautiful watch for it, which was quite an honor. To, uh, so when you think about winning Herdsman Award for Canada, I've done very well. Like it, but I worked awful hard at it. I mean, my days were five o'clock in the morning till God knows when, right from the day I was born. Because uh, you know. So some of the associations I belong to there, I belong to the, I was asked to sit on the COE at Kitchener when Don Cardillo was, was mayor up there. I don't know if you, some of you remember him. They didn't have a beef show in the COE, they had a dairy show. So some of the couple guys that I knew in the dairy business uh, asked me to sit on that board and and bring a beef show to the COE in Kitchener, and that was a big exhibition, so which I did, and we brought a beef show, but it's all gone now. Then I was Brant Cattleman president and director for years, and I was West Central Herford Zone president and director for years. I, I was on the West Central Saddle Club. I belonged to the St. George Lions, and I judged a few shows around the country, and one of them was the New Brunswick Central Ontario exhibition, was like the Royal down there, and then someone, uh, uh, 
one of the great shows years ago as well, in Guelph used to have a, a junior show too, and I judged that back in 1981, and it was a big show. So those are some of the things I've done, and uh, this is the farm, just picture just taken actually a couple days ago, and that's my big old red brick house. This is my workshop now that used to be a bull barn and sheep barn, and that's my workshop. And Murray's been out there, and a few of you have. So that's that's mine totally now that I can work out of. I've made a deal uh, with Tim Horns. I can stay on the farm for the rest of my life until we decide to leave. And I still work part time doing chores, and I'm working part time for Clark and Dave Ross from Grand Valley has cows, and I'm helping him get established. And I do all the hay for four farmers on the side of it. So I'm still up at five in the morning, and <laughs> I, I just I just haven't quit, so. But I probably missed a lot of things there that, you know, I've got yeah. tons of stuff, but uh, but thank you very much for putting up with it. Thank you. Well, I, want to tell you, I'm very, I think I'm a very lucky person because in all my years, I've been run over by a tractor across my top of my legs when I was very young and I survived. I've been crushed in the chest by a 2,000 pound cow that I should have been dead. I thought I was going to die, but I'm still living. And I've been in pesticide without mass for 50 years, but here I am in front of you today still living, so I, I feel pretty lucky.